Hello and welcome back to another vlog. Thank you so much for tuning in as always. My name is Claire Carmichael and I'm a newly qualified general practice nurse. I'm ashamed to say I'm 36 years old, I am a nurse and I have never ever given blood. This was my first time and there's always been, well there's a mixture of two things. Firstly, I'd never really thought about it before. I know the message is out there and maybe the message needs to be out there a little bit more and people need to raise awareness a little bit more I think because I didn't really think about it until probably a few years ago and I thought maybe I should give blood that's a really good thing to do but then I had um, tattoos I had piercings I go away on holiday so there was always something that was stopping me from giving blood but then that's down to me as well because if I really really wanted to I would prioritize that obviously so I think for me I need more awareness I think and this, this is why I wanted to do this vlog to raise a bit more awareness about how important it is to donate blood and actually how unpainful and actually fine it was as well spoiler alert it was okay but on sunday i gave my very very first blood donation i couldn't vlog when i was in there i couldn't because of um the people that were around me i didn't want to break confidentiality anything like that so i didn't vlog when i was in there but i did take a picture it's coming up now so please if you're squeamish look away for a split four seconds i will put this on for um just to show that i did do it i was there <laughs> um but yes this was my blood donation now i have to warn you this looks 10 hundred million times worse than it actually is. I think because when she went into my vein, and this happens to me as well, because I take blood. Sometimes if your vein's quite juicy vein and you go in, sometimes the blood squirts out as you go in. I think that's a good sign because you've got good juicy veins, I suppose. So that's why it looks a little bit worse because when she went in, a bit of blood squirted out and it's on my arm. So it looks way worse than it was. It wasn't that bad, I promise. So what happens when you give blood? Firstly, you register, download the app. I'll put all the links below, download the app, register your interest to donate blood. There's a whole load of dates and times to pick from. They may be weeks and weeks and weeks in advance. I had to wait, I think about three months for my blood donation because it was so full. And obviously it gets so full because they, they haven't got that much space to do the blood donation. So only so many people can go at once um, and they only have certain days and times that they do it. So it looks like a lot of people are given blood, but actually really Realistically, not many people are giving blood, if that makes sense. So please sign up. It's worth the wait. Please do it. Register today. Next, you will get some updates. You will get some text message updates from them just to remind you to sort of motivate you. It motivated me. Um, then you will get a form through the post. Um, you fill this form out and you hand it in when you arrive and a letter just as a reminder as well and just some preparation things to do before you go for your blood donation. So things such as make sure you eat in the morning. It's not a fasting blood test. Make sure you eat make sure you stay hydrated. So I prepared the day before and this is something I always do if I'm going to have a blood test or something like that. So if you really struggle with blood tests and they can't find veins and stuff like that, just a little tip that it doesn't always help, but nine times out of 10, it really does help. So the day before you want to start getting hydrated, drink as much as you physically can without overflowing your veins. You don't want to overdo it, but just drink a lot. You don't want to be just drinking one or two drinks a day. That's not good. You want to pump them veins up, get them ready. Make sure you eat on the day of your blood test or your blood donation. Make sure you're drinking plenty of fluids, pints and pints in the morning before you go. I had two big mugs of tea. I had a glass of squash, like a half pint of squash. And then when I arrived, I had my breakfast as well. And then when I arrived at 940 they gave me a pint of squash to drink as well and some biscuits and stuff. So I did that as well. So I really overdid it, I think, because I wanted to be prepared for my blood test. So that's what I did. So make sure when you go for your blood test, just prepare yourself. Make sure you eat, make sure you drink a lot. Just really prepare your, yourself and your veins. But not only that, it's going to help you maybe stop from passing out because it is a lot of blood they take. And um 
a lot of people do feel a lot faint and queasy and I actually felt fine after mine and I think that was the preparation side of it as well as the mental state of, of it. I know a lot of people have needle phobias, blood phobias, trust me I've seen so many people faint when I've taken their blood. Even the people that say that they're okay with needles I've seen faint. It, it's so common, it really really is. So please don't be embarrassed or worried that this might happen to you because if it's going to happen it's going to happen but um, just prepare yourself for it and make sure you're eating and drinking and that's why they have a lot of snacks on site as well just to get those blood sugar levels up and yeah you'll be okay don't panic so on arrival you will get to a little desk you will register they will make you sit in a waiting area because of covid at the minute i sat in a different room everything was like separated we had all this distancing in place it was really really well organized actually so i had to sit in a room i drank my pint of squash i had some biscuits and then i feel out of form because I couldn't find my form I know I had it planned I still can't find it I put it somewhere so safe I can't find it so I arrived I had to fill out the form so I just filled out the form drank some squash and then they took me through they went onto the computer system so you will sit with a really nice healthcare professional who goes through all the questions for you they will double check your identity so check your name address date of birth make sure you are who you say you are you're not just giving blood for somebody else I don't know why anyone would do that but um yeah that just they've got to put in these checks people are strange sometimes and then they will take you to a little private booth where they will do a finger prick test which wasn't too bad actually i was really dreading it because i know they can hurt quite a bit but actually it wasn't too bad they just put a drop of blood into this solution i still have no idea what they do i'm not very good with bloods honestly so they drop it in and they're measuring how long it takes for it to sort of sink to the bottom to judge your blood and if it doesn't sink then they have to do the second test which i had to have of course i did um so they dropped the blood and it literally just sat on the top and i was like what does this mean? I don't know what this means. And then they said, oh, we just need to do a second test to check your HB. And they said, as long as it's over 125, it's okay. So mine was 127. So I was like, great, okay, that's good. So luckily I did give blood, thank God. And then once all that is okay, they take you round to the chair when a chair becomes available. It's not If it's not available, you'll go back into the waiting area again. And then when a chair comes available, you go, you sit in the chair, they prep you all up, they check your identity again, ask your name, address, date of birth. There's quite a lot of checks that goes on, which is nice. Assess your veins. That's the first thing they have to do is assess whether your veins are good enough for blood donation. Because if you've not got good veins, it, you're there for quite a while. You're there between five to eight minutes, they say, given blood. So your veins have to be good enough for them to get the vein in the first place. And yeah, it's got to be a good flow and stuff like that. So they have to assess the veins, how big they are, how juicy they are, if they bounce. Like when you tap them, do they bounce? Have they got a good bounce? Which means you've got a, a sort of a good amount of flow of blood. But yeah, anyway, they assess your veins. If they're not good enough, you're out of there, you can't donate blood, you have to come back another day and do 101 things like drinking more and stuff like that to try and get your veins good enough. And yeah, but my blood, it kept um, slowing down and the, the machine kept um, sort of beeping. So then she was like, you need to do the exercises. So you have to do this when you've got your arm like that in there and you have to sort of squeeze your hand like this. And then they give you exercises to clench your bum and your thighs and then release slowly and then clench and then release. I'm doing it now. Why am I doing it now? <laughs> and they give you other things where you have to move your feet like this and lift a leg and lift a leg and then lift both legs. All things like that. But as I was doing that, I think I wasn't thinking about my arm and I kept moving my arm. And possibly that's why the machine kept slowing down. That's my theory. So in the end, I just had to lie there like, just concentrate on the blood. Concentrate. Um, but it was okay in the end. I managed to get the full bag and I'm so chuffed that I finally did it. And then she took it out and it was fine. I was fine. I felt fine afterwards. Everyone was so lovely as well. They will constantly check on you, constantly say thank you as well for your donation. It was just such a nice experience. And I know people don't really think of blood donations as a nice experience, but it was nice. It made me feel good. And everyone was so thankful for your donation as well. Everyone was really friendly and lovely. And after your blood donation, you'll be asked to take another seat. So you have to wait for about five to 10 minutes just to make sure that you're okay. You're not going to pass out or anything like that. Drink the tea, coffee, juice that they provided, the crisps, the biscuits, chocolate, whatever they provided, have. Because you need to make sure that you're okay before you leave that room and replace those fluids that you're sort of losing, if that makes sense. Afterwards, my arm... I think my arm hurt more after 
I mean, you feel it go in when you um, when they initially put the needle in. It's like if you've got your ear pierced or your nose pierced or anything like that. You feel that sharp, but it's literally seconds. Once it's in, you don't feel it. So you just sort of lie in there. Like, I don't know if any, anyone else is the same, but I couldn't feel anything once it was in. It was just that initial quick, literally seconds to save a life is nothing. So please don't let that put you off at all. Um, and then afterwards, it felt like um, felt like I'd been at the gym and I'd been doing weights on this arm because my whole arm was aching and it felt where they took the blood just felt a bit bruised, but that was it. And it felt like that pretty much for the rest of the night until the next day. The next day, it was fine. It was like nothing had happened. And literally, I had the tiniest, I mean, you can see it now. That's literally all I've had when I took the plaster off. And I looked and I was like, is that it? Come on, guys. <laughs> I looked at it I was like, this is pathetic, come on. I was expecting it to go really bad because I bruise really easy. But actually, that's nothing. For me, that's nothing. I fully expected a lot worse. And I know some people do bruise a lot worse as well afterwards. So if you do get bruised, don't worry about it. It's normal. And I found out that my blood group, when you go, you find out your blood group. Sorry, info, guys. So I found out I'm B positive, which is amazing. And then I read into actually... Only 8% of people that give donations are B positive. Does that make sense? So B positive people, only 8% of us give donations. So I looked at that and I thought, you know what? I, now I need to give blood because there's not so many of us giving blood. And that really put that into perspective. And that really put that into perspective for me. So now every 16 weeks, females, you can give every 16 weeks. So now I'm going to be giving blood every 16 weeks, knowing those stats and knowing actually it was all right. It was literally nothing. So I'm going to give blood every 16 weeks, guys. Save a life. So yes, that B positive status really cheered me up. Like that is the perfect blood group for me. B positive. That is me. I am positive. Yeah. So the second half of this video is all about some little facts about blood donations, why your donation is needed, and hopefully it's going to give you the motivation to register today. It's not that bad, guys. Just do it. Go on. So the NHS blood donation people need at least 400 new donors a day and around 135,000 donors a year to replace the people that can't donate anymore. They also need 40,000 black donors to meet the demand for better matched blood. They also need 30,000 new donors with priority blood such as O negative every year. And more young people really need to start signing up to give blood so that we've got more blood donations for the future. The two rarest and the most high in demand blood groups are AB negative and RO subtype with only around 2% of donors that have these type of bloods and the demand increases by 10 to 15% each year for it. So there might be some things that stop you from giving blood. So if you've um, been unwell recently and with COVID, it's going to be even harder. If you've currently got a cold, flu, if you're pregnant, if you've got a long term condition, if you're currently taking any antibiotics, if you've had any sort of medical treatment recently or if you've been for a big operation at the dentist. Some parts of travel as well. So if you've traveled outside the UK, you need to make sure that that's not on the list of you can't donate blood. If you've received a transplant or a blood transfusion yourself, if you have had acupuncture in the last so many weeks, then you can't give blood. But if it was like a few months ago, then it's OK. And in November 2017, I'm pleased to announce there were some changes so that men who have sex with men can give blood now. So we need more blood donors. Absolutely. 100 percent. Get out there. Register today. Give blood. It's an amazing feeling as well. I got a text message. I'll put the text message here, actually. I got a text message as well to say that um, I had my blood group and my, my blood was being processed for somebody. So it was just amazing to think, do you know what? That was really quick. I'd, I've only just literally given my blood this week. Like within days, I've had a text message to say it's been used. And it was just amazing. So chuffed that I finally did it. Not only was it my New Year's resolution, but it's a really good thing to do. It's saving a life. You are literally saving a life. And I always said, do you know what? My mission is before I die, I want to save a life. And to know that I may have possibly have saved a life today is just incredible. And if that doesn't motivate you, I don't know what will. Don't be selfish. Go give your blood. Save a life.